Okay, this is a stream of consciousness as I discuss watching my time-lapse video on how to create a key from the... <sighs> well, okay, so what's going on here? Um, we are creating a key. Uh, we need to create a hex map key based on the mapping symbols given to us in the previous map which is uh, the PNG file. Uh, right here you see that I am busy cutting together the various pieces and I am discussing this on the fly so I sound absolutely terrible so you're gonna have to uh, turn the audio off I suppose and just watch this without the audio because <laughs> it's just massively terrible. Um, the first step in creating uh, this project is to create your um, pattern. And the pattern that you need is a hexagonal pattern. And how you create this hexagonal pattern is demonstrated in these pieces here. So I'm going to create this as a single mono uh, audio file and cut it together a little bit later. Uh, it's important that you actually cut down the key properly, uh, having the uh, various elements because they're going to stack because uh, when you crop this image you need it to crop properly to the right size otherwise when you apply the pattern you're going to have holes in your hexagon pattern so we're creating a hexagon pattern here for Adobe Photoshop at 300 dpi and that's rather important <coughs> here we go with the crop system right here and you can see it's coming together quite nicely and it'll snap right to the edges of the image uh, that we need. And that's, that's what we're looking for, because we want to be able to apply this pattern, and it will then very nicely um, create that pattern a little bit later. But as you'll see, uh, as we zoom in here, uh, even though I've uh, almost got it done, we've got a small little problem that we have to figure out. So I didn't figure that out until a little bit later, so here I am creating the... <coughs> creating the pattern that you see. <coughs> I'm going to have to cut this audio together as well, I see. Uh, so here we are uh, looking at the uh, mistake. And so I'm going to just grab this other end, uh, create a layer copy of it, and flip it around. In this way, we'll be able to hopefully make sure that things work much, much better. And so um, here we just uh, use the rectangle tool and uh, flip it around. Uh, showing the transform grid controls helps us do that. Um, anybody who's had Photoshop training for a little while probably has seen this trick before, but I'm just uh, doing it very quickly here, making sure that the width is 100% minus. And that way it's going to be on the same angle that we need. And I'm just uh, copying over this very squiggly line because I really hate that squiggly line. It doesn't look very nice at all, so I'm just kind of reorienting it, turning the grid control off, and then I'm going to have to merge those two layers together. Once we've got that done, I can now redefine the pattern uh, that I really want, so I'm going to rename it hex key at 300 by 300 dpi or pixels and uh, click OK. So here we are now, uh, we're ready to create our new map, and we want this map, it's going to be a sample map here, and I'm just going to make it, uh, oh yes, uh, inches, here we go, inches, so probably uh, width 10, height 8, here we go. I'm actually watching uh, myself uh, as I create this audio track. Um, then we use the bucket tool, and we choose the pattern. Uh, if that wasn't obvious before, make sure that you choose the pattern. You want the right pattern, and then click OK, and uh, voila, there you are. You now have the pattern. It's 300 dpi, which is wonderful because then we can use the quick select tool for the most part, uh, remembering to select only what we want, and with the move tool and the snap to grid on, um, or rather the transform tools on, then we can move it uh, to our sample map. What we really want to do here is we want to help ourselves out by organizing uh, the layers in a consistent and meaningful way. And so we're just going to uh, 
continue to uh, make sure that the layer is uh, properly named grid and the other layer is uh, named grasslands. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to combine all these things um, together with several grassland uh, tiles. So I, I'd forgotten what the name was, so I went back and just double checked. And you can toggle back and forth between your mapping symbols and your map once you get this going. And once you've created the key, you'll never have to create the key again, which is awesome, because creating the key is really a bit of a pain. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to upload the key um, file so that you don't have to do that. <coughs> so here I am. I'm just going Control uh, J or Command J, depending on whether you're on a Mac or PC, and creating a uh, hexagon pattern so that I can then merge these things together. So it's rather slow and tedious, and uh, you can kind of speed this along or switch to another section that makes sense to you, however, uh, or whatever your level of Photoshop experience is. So here we go. So remember to uh, turn off the grid because you don't want to merge the grids together uh, with this, otherwise it gets a little bit sloppy. Uh, but you can nudge them, which is kind of nice. So if you right click on the object, you can uh, select the grid and then just nudge them into place. Um, as I'm doing here, just so you kind of close the gaps, double check what you like. So if you if you like what you see, great, continue to move on. I was really pretty sloppy here because I was doing it very quickly for the demonstration purposes of this uh, video tutorial. Um, sometimes I, in fact, actually just uh, don't bother doing this at all, just do it uh, hex by hex, which is rather slow and tedious, but uh, sometimes I'm really making decisions about this. But if I really want to you know, make a, a lot of land um, a particular type um, very quickly, this is one of the best ways to do it. <coughs> the advantage of doing this as well is that this is exactly a, a hex of a different size. So if you're scaling a map, um, for instance, and you need to make sure that you're mimicking the, the hex style uh, from the previous map that you're working from. Say you're at an 8-mile eight ho eight ha hex map, and this is a 2.6 or 2.7-mile uh, hex map. Then um, all of your resources then are the right size, and you know exactly what you're doing, even without uh, making a larger hex grid, <coughs> which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. I'm just getting another uh, resource here just to show you how it's done. Again, I'm using the quick select tool and um, I'm kind of looking around for the forest piece and I want to make sure that when I select it um, that I'm not adding. So what's really important here is um, I've kind of goofed on this piece. As you can see, it's, it's too big and so I need to do this again. I've got more than one resource selected so I'm just going to go back to the quick select tool here and uh, control D out so I lose uh, all the little dancing ants and then reselect just that one then move back to the move tool and you can see that the scissors reappear and I'm only moving a single resource <coughs> excuse me for all the coughing clearly I haven't been using my voice enough so what we want to do here is we want to uh, name the layer and then we want to create a whole bunch of these again just like we did for the grasslands I'll probably cut out all the coughing. We'll see. Okay, so here we go. I'm getting up to about uh, nine minutes worth of video. It's probably very painful to sit through, but this is uh, all command or control uh, J work, and you're going to do that several times to make the pattern that we're looking for. I'm just kind of centering things so you can see what I'm doing a little more clearly. And I'm, I'm a little bit lazy, as you can see. I'm not really making sure that every single time I've got the tree in the right spot. And uh, I'd like to say this is intentional, but uh, I really just moved too quickly through the process. <coughs> but I have a fix that works really, really well. And uh, I highly recommend you do it, which is to color the background, which you'll see uh, right at the end of this video. So it's a little bit of a piece here so I'm just going to nudge these things again uh, or not and then uh, once I've got the turned off the grids turned off everything's turned off except the forest so I then want to go um, turn the grid off and make sure that I've got nothing else on except the light forest symbol and then merge the visible then I'm going to create another folder for the forest 
and um, keep my resources organized. Let me just name them Light Forest and then drag them into the fo folder when you're done. Like that. And turn the grid back on. Perhaps uh, resize th uh, the view so you can see everything that's going on and your other resources and then say I want to put some forest around my grassland area. And here I'm just doing exactly that. and I'm just moving things around bit by bit. Again, you can speed through this video or stop here. This is uh, pretty much, uh, here I did a control something else, um, which happens every once in a while when you're trying to work quickly. And so just ignore that other pop-up window. So that shows you that the different resources are uh, put together. And now, as I was saying, when you're trying to do a recreation of another map at uh, uh, a smaller scale, this is uh, 2.6 slash 2.7 miles, uh, potentially, then uh, you need a new layer, and uh, you're just going to call it uh, Large Grid or some other name that makes sense to you. And then you can simply redo the key pattern over top, making sure that uh, you're on the right resource, of course. And then you want to resize it by 300%. Uh, and when you resize it, uh, you can just grab the transform tools and then go up to the top and uh, type in 300 by 300 width and height. And that will make it the right size. And then you can turn the grid back on, of the lower grid, and then just uh, nudge your grid around. So nudge it into place. <coughs> now, you probably won't keep the large grid, uh, but if it really annoys you because it's really black and everything else, you can of course change the opacity to something more reasonable, like 40% or so. Um, I think I chose, um, what did I stop at? Oh, 40%, look at that. So there you are, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Happy mapping!